Or actually my question is, what can we learn from models and which knowledge can we actually gain from models? And this is going to some sort of well, epistemolo epistemology, I'm trying to practice it. Epistemological question. And of course we are here in Vienna and there's only one person that we can think of and that's Karl Popper. So this slide is based on his Conjectures and Reputations uh, work which he published in uh, 1963. And there he asks the question, what can we actually know and how can we increase our knowledge? And then he cites many philosophers, so we go back. Now, first to Kant, he had four main questions during his philosophy and one of them was, what can we know? Well, he, I think he was one of the smartest, smartest persons ever lived. And he spent like 60 years of his life answering this question and I think he still didn't give the right answer. And then we have St. Novalis, this, uh, well, 500 before Christ, so that's a long time ago. And he already acknowledged that we human beings cannot really know anything. All our knowledge is guesswork. We never know reality. It's all conjectural knowledge. So, a very humble position, I would say. Also Socrates, we already heard him before. Uh, you said he had an answer to everything, <laughs> but he actually had an answer to, he didn't have an answer to anything. Because he said, I don't know anything. I know that I don't know anything. Uh, Plato, we also saw him before. He said, all knowledge is recognition. So we already know everything before we were born, then we forget, and then we will re recognize things as soon as we see them again. Well, he kind of changed his theory in his later work, but uh, I will come to that later. And Francis Bacon, he said, if you have a pure mind free from prejudice, which is basically impossible, then you can read nature, then you can observe reality. Well, these are all people, they are all dead already, and they are still cited. So I don't know how many of us will be cited 2,000 years after our death. But Socrates is, and I think that makes him a smart guy. And he was so humble in saying which knowledge he had. He knew, he didn't know anything. So why are we so arrogant nowadays to think that we know everything? That's the feeling I have sometimes. So, um, yeah, sorry for my drawing. But uh, this is supposed to be Plato's cave. And I thought, you have some sort of reality? And, well, we can never observe it, so even our observations have already this uncertainty, and that is the projection of reality on the cave. But if you go to hydrological models, which we use nowadays to gain knowledge, yeah, this is supposed to be a mirror, but models are not even, um, our observations, they're not even the reflection of reality, but one step further. And later, yesterday in the train, I was thinking, it's not even a mirror, it's just a drawing by these people there. Because a mirror would already be too exact. So, just to confirm my point, Popper also said it, models cannot be reality, they cannot reflect reality. We can only compare them with each other, because we are ignorant of the truth. And the same from the, the famous paper of Naomi Oveskis in Science, that verification and validation of numerical models of natural systems is impossible. So we should really, really realize that models are not reality. So then we have Popper again, he said, yeah, there's only falsification, we can only say that the model doesn't work, we can never say that something works. The same is the conclusion from Naomi Oneskis, you can only confirm a model with a certain extent, but you can never say that it's reality. And of course, there's, we get closer to the water story, Kirchner, who says it can be right for the wrong reasons, and we can never, actually never know whether we are right for the right reasons. So my question to everyone here is, do we as overestimate the knowledge that we can gain from models. And that's what I would like to discuss with you uh, later. Thank you.